So how many of you think, of, when you think of Ocado, how many of you think of it as a grocery company? If you raise your hands. And how many, put your hands up if you think it's also an engineering company, automation engineering company. Wow, I've got to do a convincing. <laughs> okay, good afternoon again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm Vipin Pillai. I head up the design and development team there. Now I've got 20 years of work experience working with a variety of sectors, automotive, healthcare, um, industrial automation, and all five vehicles. But like every product engineer, when I came to Ocado, I was in for a nice realization. And the scale of automation at Ocado actually poses some very unique challenges for an engineer. So we are a part of the product development team and we work together with facilities integration, buildings engineering team and technology teams to really come up with the state of the art end to end logistics system. So this is one of the most complex systems and it poses several unique challenges. The development involves a lot of functions, as you see, um, electrical, mechanical, wireless technologies, control software, and uh, 3D simulation. And then we have civil and structural too. So in, in the next 20 minutes, I'll be speaking to you with, with two sequels. The first one about how uh, the, the journey, our journey towards uh, Ocado becoming a, a platform provider, and secondly, we'll talk of the engineering challenges in our business. So we started in the year 2000 as a small company, a small company who's willing to disrupt, and we, we continue to disrupt the grocery, online grocery uh, industry. And we quickly uh, grew to become what is uh, the world's biggest online only supermarket. And, but we had bigger ambitions. And we want, what we wanted to do was sell our automation to uh, other retailers, you know, other external customers. So as, a, as the world's only online uh, grocery retailer, the biggest one, uh, we, we have about 650,000 customers and a wide range of products. And if you see, we have to pick and pack about 250,000 quarter million of products every, uh, every week across all our facilities. So if you imagine the typical grocery selling model, what happens is all of the products from a variety of suppliers come into a distribution center from where it is sorted, you know, segregated, packed, and then sent into smaller stores before it comes into the hands of you and I, you know, uh, our customers. But we at Ocado believe in building very highly automated customer fulfillment centers, and then ship everything straight from there into the customer's hands. And what does this give? It gives the customer freshness. And what it gives us, it's a tight inventory control. And it minimizes product handling and maximizes shelf life. And that's exactly what we pass, it, pass back on to our customers. So that's th th this is what leads us to you know, industry-leading uh, industry customer service metrics. And that's 95% uh, uh, on time to delivery, 99% accuracy, and about 0.7% waste. And if you consider some of the other industries, I mean other normal supermarket, it's like 3% waste. So just to give you, a, I'm gonna give you a good visualization of the scale of our facilities, I'm gonna talk of football pitches, in terms of football pitches. And then I'll talk of customer fulfillment centers. And you'll keep hearing this acronym, it's so much within us, you know, CFC. So it's customer fulfillment center. Now, a distribution center is a place where you can hold large stock for long periods of time. But an Ocado CFC, it's, not, it's a place where you can hold the right products for the right time and at the right stock levels. And that's exactly what gives us just-in-time delivery. So many of our competitors, they were still continuing to do manual trolley picks, but Ocado continued to innovate. Innovate as a very brilliant in, uh, integrator. And we created some of the world's best automation equipment leading to great, uh, uh, the industry's best logistics system. 
So Hat, uh, Hatfield and Dorden facilities are already considered as, uh, by, by the logistics industry as state-of-the-art um, equipment, you know? And Dorden facility is, uh, one, is something which we have improved over our Hatfield. It's, it's, they are learnings from Hatfield. Give you a moment to view this. So each of this, these facilities have about 25 kilometers of conveyor lines and hundreds of pick aisles, high-speed shuttle cranes. This is what uh, has driven Okado into a profitable grocery retailing business. And we do about pick and pack about 14 million items every week. But then our ambition was to really go into a uh, creating a platform that can be offered to external customers. And we had to develop the system to be scalable, and we wanted to improve our pick quality and speeds, and above all, improve our resiliency. So we began our journey towards creating what's called as a goods-to-person system. Goods-to-person system. And that's, if, if you can imagine, take all this 25 kilometers of conveyor line, crunch it up together, and make it a large cube. Put in a lot of, put in a lot of machines around it, and then drop thousands of robots over this cube. And that's what you get in our, in our uh, CFC, the, the state-of-the-art new CFC. Now, imagine Heathrow, it has to take what, it, it, there are about 1,400 planes Heathrow runway, handles, you know, and that's about one plane on the, on the runway every 45 seconds. In that 45 seconds, a fleet of 1,000 robots in our CFC would have done 7,500 moves. And that's all possible because of complex artificial intelligence algorithms, which allows to, us to plan all of these movements of these fleets of robots. And that's exactly how it's used in air traffic control system. So this is what it looks like in real life in one of our facilities. It's one of our grids at Andover. It's the size of two football pitches. And we have two such grids in Andover, one for the ambient temperature and one for the chill temperature. And we built this, we built this facility. It went live in 2016. And it's densely packed to a height of about six meters. And we call this Okado Smart Platform, OSP, another acronym. In OSP, there are grids, uh, normally, which is the footprint of several football pitches, and it's about two or three stories high. And it contains hundreds of thousands of crates, all packed up right up to the roof, and then these fleet of thousands of robots are actually running over the surface of the grid. And that's our edit CFC. As we speak, it's being prepared. Um, it's it's uh, it's going to be even. It's it's the size of about nine football pitches. What you see on the largest structure there. It's got steel of around, around the size of Wembley Arch, and if you if you take the weight of aluminium in tons, it's, it equals about 70 million cans of coke, coke. That's how much the size of our CFCs are. But all of it, the, so you, you understand now the kind of the scale of our automation and you know the, the operations at, at an Ocado CFC. But it, it doesn't come free. It comes with a lot of engineering challenges. So what I'm going to share with you in the next, next few minutes uh, is the, is, is, are the challenges, and particularly of how all these all, all scale actually amplifies each of these factors. So what you see here is the image of two robots actually passing through, passing at close proximity at very high speeds, and it's a few millimeters in distance. So typical production lines, they need, uh, they have millimeters of precision tolerance, but we have to achieve this over a large scale, it's over a large machine, you know, and that's, that's quite a challenge. And the challenge comes from actually the repeatability of the motion, and then we have to build this repeatable grid, and which is, which is regardless of any scale, we still have to achieve these tolerances. So you have a precise machine, 
and, but you want to make it consistently work, reliably work across all temperature zones. And we have a wide varying temperature zones in our, uh, in our facility. And the sheer size of the grid presents a lot of, presents the therm uh, thermal expansion as a challenge, which is amplified by the scale. But our simulation capabilities and, uh, and our ability to model all of this in, in, our, in our models actually help us really estimate not only the thermal expansion, but we can also predict what are the structural forces which, which are encountered because of the expansion. So as much flexible and as much reliable it is, as much precise it is, the system is also to be uh, reliable and we have to make these products reliable. And when you have thousands of these things running simultaneously, again, scale amplifies the need for high reliability. So this is a highly flexible system. It's a, very, it's, it's a parallel system, which means that if we detect a problem in one of the machines, so a sick, uh, uh, the to all the tasks of a sick robot can be taken over by a healthy robot. Or if you have an unhealthy workstation, you can redirect all the products from an unhealthy workstation into a healthy workstation. With, with all this comes safety, and our, our systems are certified to SIL-3 capability, and that's like if you take nuclear facilities, it's SIL-4, and there are very few industries which operate at higher level than SIL-3, which means we can actually switch off thousands of robots say, uh, simultaneously into a safe state just by using wireless technology. All, our, all our, uh, our, our structures are designed, our grid, and all our systems are designed for 20 years of life cycle management. People are investing so much in a CFC, you know, they want a long life cycle. And some of the, of course, there are components and products and parts which may be having a different life cycle. For instance, if you take our grid structure alone, it's got millions of components which will have varying load cases, and they experience different different scenarios of load cases. And that has to go, uh, it goes through a 20, it's in a 24 seven environment, which makes it even more complex. But sensing technology, and then we have internet of things, which in, within our OSP actually helps us to understand, analyze, and then design out these challenges which are amplified by the scale of the facility. Last, but not the least, visualization. I know a lot of speakers here spoke about visualization and sense and feeling, you know. Uh, visualization is a real challenge when you develop such large machines. So product development, if you see where we are part of, you know, we are continuously building products and uh, it follows a different credence. That includes the grid, uh, which go into the making of a CFC. At the same time, you have facilities engineering who are taking all of these products which product development has created, then putting them together with the structural elements, interfacing them at the same time. And you have wireless groups, uh, wireless technology, the technology group who, picks, who actually uh, do, does a complete CFC throughput and also does uh, the wireless requirement for the CFC. And this is one of the world's densest 4G network. And at the same time, same time, buildings engineering group, they are actually designing in the air conditioning, they're designing office spaces, you know, readying the power, power and transmission lines which are required for the facility. So it's, it's, it's a very complex operation, what happens in, in terms of building a CFC. And our internal business teams at the same time, and external customers too, they want to really look at this uh, and you know, visualize all of this ahead of the time, you know, not just wait for the CFC to be built. So that's, that's a requirement we appreciate. So these teams all collaborate together and work at a different cadence and still deliver CFCs on time. So to sum up, uh, Okado started in the year 2000. We went away from the conventional uh, conveyor lines and we built our OSP, Okado Smart Platform, which helps us really uh, drive scalability, reliability, and you know, it helps us serve our customer metrics. These scalable systems still poses a lot of engineering challenges, which we have discussed about. But 
And, but we, we at Ocado have never feared taking big steps. At the same time, uh, we want to perfect what we've done. So if I, I'm sure if I ask you now about how many, um, how many of you believe Ocado, Ocado is an automation engineering company, I hope everybody will put your hands up. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you, Develop3D, for inviting me here. Appreciate that. Thank you for the organizers. Thank you for your <laughs>